Good morning, friends. It is raining here in central Arkansas, and I gotta do something to keep myself awake, honestly. I get so sleepy on days when it's raining, even though I got perfectly good sleep last night. This just makes me wanna go to sleep. So, we're gonna make some cookies. I saw a video on YouTube the other day. A lady was making some cookies. The mixture looks a little bit dry, but she said they were so good, and they look like they were good. So. We're gonna give those a try today. It makes a very small batch. These are gluten-free. I've already ground up part of my oats, my old-fashioned oats, and I have my butter softening on the stovetop, and I have my pecans toasting in the oven right now. So right in the middle of things, let's turn the camera around, go over to the counter, and make some of these cookies, and I'll give you an honest opinion what they really, really taste like to me. So go with us. All right, I have my butter completely softened in this bowl. Make sure both my cameras have something picking up. All right, the first thing we want to do to this is get a fourth of a cup of coconut sugar. I thought I was completely prepared. I guess I wasn't. I'm using coconut sugar because the recipe called for coconut sugar, but I would use this anyway just because I try to steer clear of the refined sugar. Coconut sugar is a great alternative. So just one fourth of a cup. I need one tablespoon of date syrup. And I have my bottle turned upside down, but you can see what it looks like. This is called Date Lady Date Syrup. And about a tablespoon of that. I have the bottle turned upside down because it's running kind of low in this particular bottle. If you've never had date syrup, I would say it is a close taste and texture to dark molasses, but it does not have the acidic taste of the molasses. So if you're one of those people that say, I cannot taste, I, I can't stand molasses, it tastes like metal or something like that. It does, there's those people that cilantro, molasses, and there's something else that people eat and they say, no, that's, I'm, I'm not a cilantro person. It tastes like soap or I can't, handle molasses, it tastes like metal or something like that. It's not that you're crazy, that really is a thing. But um, I'm one of those people who love molasses and I love cilantro, but I understand there are people who don't. So this does not have the, I think it doesn't have the offensive taste that molasses would. I'm not sure because my tongue doesn't have that particular attribute to it that kind of messes me up with molasses. I could drink a whole bottle. <coughs> To this, I'm going to add three tablespoons of whole milk. Now, you can use a milk alternative if you're dairy-free. You can also use coconut oil instead of butter if you want these to be dairy-free. In fact, the recipe that I watched the other day, she was using coconut oil, but you know me. I'm a rebel. I'm going to just throw some butter off in there. And this came from a YouTube channel called Cooking with Pam, I believe. Every once in a while, I see something on there that just looks intriguing to me, and this is one of them. Plus, it just makes a few and makes me not be able to eat, you know, four dozen when I could just eat eight large ones. <laughs> All right, we're gonna put in here 
three fourths of a teaspoon of baking powder, not baking soda, but baking powder. This is what the bag looks like. This is cloth thread meal. Force the teeth and baking powder. My oven just signaled to me that it's preheated, so I'm going to go ahead and take these pecans out just so they don't get too dark. I was toasting them while I had my oven preheating. Now you want to preheat your oven to 355. I don't think I've ever read a recipe that says preheat your oven to 355. That's just an odd temperature, but I'm going with it because that's what she said to do. Fourth teaspoon of salt. This is just pink Himalayan salt I have. And a teaspoon of vanilla. This is my homemade vanilla in this jar. Yes, I use a medicine dropper to measure out the vanilla because I find that that's what works best for me. It's pretty accurate. And I don't spill it. That's the key. So give those things a stir. And then we're going to put in... One cup of ground up rolled oats. These are old fashioned oats. Don't use the quick oats. Old fashioned oats and grind them up into oat flour. But if you have oat flour in a bag, then that's fine. Use that. Now this mixture looked really dry when she was mixing it together and forming them into cookies. So that's my big concern there. But I don't have any doubt that the taste is going to be good just because the ingredients it calls for. All right, so this is what it looks like with just the oat flour mixed in. Now we're going to take a cup of old fashioned oats. And these are organic oats. I'm kind of picky about my oats, but these are just organic rolled oats. Got to be careful. There's so many reports about so many of the oat brands, the conventional oat brands, as well as they say some of the organic having uh, glyphosate in it. But I'm hoping this brand does not. Okay, so one cup of whole rolled oats. I was going to use a clear glass bowl so you could see the ingredients, but I wanted to soften my butter on the stove top, so that's why I used this metal, this stainless steel bowl. If you have stainless steel bowls, I'm telling you, these are almost worth their weight in gold. I love these silly things. You can bake things in them. You can put things on the stove top. I had a roommate in um, college. It was just a business college, and she would make scrambled eggs in a small stainless steel bowl. And for the life of me, I just thought that was insane. And then I got to thinking later on, well, that's kind of crazy. It's metal. It's, it, you don't have to have a cast iron skillet. You know, I was just going by the rules of, well, my Nana did it that way. So I'll do it this way. But she said that's what her mother did. So it turned out fine. But stainless steel bowls are just great. Now, I'm just taking my pecans. If some of them are whole, I'm just crushing them up into a little bit smaller pieces. But most of them are just tiny pieces anyway. I took some of the smaller ones out of my bag of pecans because I like to use the bigger ones in things that I might have to have some for the top of, like a cake or something like that. And they just look prettier, so I don't mind using these little pieces in this. So a fourth cup of pecan pieces, if you add a little bit more, that's, I'm sure, fine. She also said, uh, Miss Pam in the video said that you could use 
raisins or chocolate chips, but if you use chocolate chips, it's like conventional chocolate chips, then you've added processed sugar to it. So I don't really see the need in that, but now I do love me some raisins. So I might try these with raisins next. All right, so as you can see, this does not make up a whole lot of cookie dough. Set this aside and I already have some, just some parchment I used for something else on my pan. And we're going to scoop this dough out. Mine seems a little bit wetter than hers, so I'm not sure why. She made, I think, seven or eight large cookies, and she was forming them with her hands and pressing them down. But again, her dough seemed... A lot drier than this so maybe I'm completely off and did something wrong which I know I wouldn't be surprised by that this is a pretty large cookie dough scoop as you can see I think this holds an eighth of a cup or two tablespoons of dough it's not as big as like an ice cream scoop but it's a little bit bigger than most cookie dough scoops. All right, I'm gonna try to get the last bit of this in here. Because if you're familiar with our channel at all, I don't leave anything in the bowl. I'm gonna scrape that bowl till it's almost not needing to be washed, but not quite. run out of space on this tray so I'm just going to kind of have to figure out where to put it in the middle here. Scoop this one over and scoop that one over. And whichever cookie's the smallest will get the extra. All right I'm going to see if I can smash these down a bit. My spatula isn't quite wanting me to smash them down. Maybe I'll do this with my fingers. This may not be a good idea y'all. Okay, those are looking fine to me. And the, the dough smells really good. Okay, we're gonna pop these in the oven for 18 to 22 minutes. And I'll just kinda eyeball them at 18 minutes. You can always cook them more, but you can't cook them less. So we'll check them at the lower amount and I'll let you see what they look like. Oh my word, they smell so good. Smell, oh, these smell crazy good. Okay, so a few minutes before these finished baking, I took a wooden spatula and I pressed, just reached in the oven and pressed the top of these six. And then these were the ones that I didn't touch at all after they baked. So you can kind of see the difference in the two. Um, all right, I'm gonna have to let these cool so I don't burn my mouth. <laughs> these. These smell incredible. Okay, her reaction when she was making these on YouTube, I thought, ah, she, maybe she's a little over dramatic. I don't really know. I don't know who she is. I don't watch her a lot, but I don't think she was being over dramatic. When she took these out of the oven, you could visibly see that she was shaking. <laughs> and she, she just needed to eat one right then. And that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. The, the smell of I, I can I can smell a little bit of the coconut sugar, but the oatmeal, you know, toasted oatmeal just smells good. But the toasted pecans, the fragrance of that is just out of this world. So this smells fabulous. All right, this has already got me to thinking. I'm gonna try some of these with raisins. I'm gonna try some with some who knows what. I'll add something else to them, but these smell so fabulous. So I'm gonna come back in just a bit and I'm gonna give you my honest opinion on these, but I gotta let them cool off because I'll burn my mouth because they're so good. I know I'm gonna be gobbling them. So we'll be right back. Y'all, I ate one of those cookies. That was ridiculously good. I didn't think it was gonna be that good, <laughs> but it was. And I even waited till it cooled off. Man, that was so good. This is gonna be on my rotation of things to uh, sit and ponder what I can add to them to change them up. I don't know, maybe it's the pecans that make them that good, but I'm telling you, those are some of the best cookies I've had in a long time. So keep in mind, these are gluten-free. 
These are egg free. These are optionally dairy free if you replace the butter with coconut oil and if you replace the whole milk with a milk substitute of some kind. But these are also refined sugar free. So there's no, there's no banana in there to sweeten it. There's not even honey in there to sweeten it. It's just the coconut sugar. And it isn't super sweet. I'll tell you what these taste a lot like. These taste a lot like those store-bought shortbread cookies. I mean, I don't remember what the name of it is, but I remember eating them as a kid. And they were good for store-bought shortbread, even though I make shortbread. But those taste like those little shortbread cookies that I had when I was a kid, which is a really long time ago. <laughs> so I would encourage you, take a look at this recipe in the description. We always include the recipe in our videos and give these a try. These are quite fabulous. Again, I didn't know they were gonna be that good. So anyway, I was just winging it and um, yeah, they turned out to be a winner. Thanks, Miss Pam from Cooking with Pam. And if you haven't watched her videos, you might check her out. She's a little dramatic, but yeah, she's pretty cute. So anyway, thanks for joining us and we look forward to sharing something again with you. See you, see ya. See ya.